Hey guys, welcome to The Reading Stack. I'm Hunter, and today we're going to be covering the book The Complete Angler by Isaac Walton. The Complete Angler was first published in 1653 by Isaac Walton. The book is 148 pages, and man, talk about a great read uh, to be covering today. The Complete Angler is a classic on uh, nature, particularly fishing. It explores it as a recreation, a sport, an art, just a very spiritual thing, a very beautiful thing. The book is just very uh, rustic. You know, it's about rural uh, lifestyle, fishing, peacefulness, uh, spiritual things. Most of the book is a dialogue between two characters, a guy named Piscator and a Venator, if I pronounce that correctly. Book is just a sweet, uh, feel-good read about fishing, going a fishing. And uh, there's a great intro in this particular edition where a guy really introduces uh, the book to you well and sets it up. And then there's a brief introduction by the author, Isaac Walton, that further um, lets you know what to expect as you read along. And the book is divided into these five days on this uh, journey that uh, Piscator and Venator go along with. On the first day, there's a conference between three different people, an angler who is a fisherman, a, a falconer, and a, a hunter, and they're both commending their recreation about which is best, which is, which is the best thing. Furthermore, it goes on after that to really uh, talk about the virtues of fishing and just how wonderful it is. So what's in the book? Well, let's read the first quote I have on page eight. So Venator is speaking. Sir, mine is a mixture of both, a little business and more pleasure. For I intend this day to do all my business, and then bestow another day or two in hunting the otter, which a friend that I go to meet tells me is much pleasanter than any other chase whatsoever. Howsoever, I mean to try it, for tomorrow morning, we shall meet a pack of otter dogs of noble Mr. Saddlers upon Amwell Hill, who will be there so early that they intend to prevent the sun rising. Then Piscator replies, Sir, my fortune has answered my desires, and my purpose is to bestow a day or two in helping to destroy some of those villainous vermin, for I hate them perfectly, because they love fish so well or rather because they destroy so much, indeed so much, that in my judgment all men that keep otter dogs ought to have pensions from the king to encourage them to destroy the very breed of those base otters. They do so much mischief. So uh, that's a pretty funny passage on the otters and just how problematic they are to fishermen. It uh, gives you a real insight into the book. Uh, some funny parts in there that uh, I don't know if they intended to be funny when they wrote them. And then on page 28, we have just this awesome nature poem. And it reads, Let me live harmlessly and near the brink of Trent or Avon have a dwelling place where I may see my quill or court down sink with eager bite of perch or bleak or dace. And on the world and my creator think whilst some men strive ill-gotten goods to embrace and others spend their time in base excess of wine or worse in war and wantonness. Let them that list these pastimes still pursue and on such pleasing fancies feed their fill. So I the fields and meadows green may view and daily by fresh rivers walk at will among the daisies and the violets blue, red hyacinth and yellow daffodil, purple narcissus like the morning rays pale gander grass and azure culver keys. I count it higher pleasure to behold the stately compass of the lofty sky and in the midst thereof like burning gold the flaming chariot of the world's great eye. The watery clouds that in the air uproll with sundry kinds of painted colors fly and fair aurora lifting up her head still blushing rise from old Tithonus bed the hills and mountains raised from the plains, the plains extended level with the ground, the grounds divided into sun-dry veins, the veins enclosed with rivers running round, these rivers making way through nature's chains with headlong course into the sea profound, the raging sea beneath the valleys low, 
where lakes and rills and rivulets do flow. The lofty woods, the forest wide and long, adorned with leaves and branches fresh and green, in whose cool bowers the birds with many a song do welcome with their choir the summer's queen, the meadows fair where Flora's gifts among or intermixed with verdant grass, with verdant grass between. The silver scaled fish that softly swim within the sweet brook's crystal watery stream. All these and many more of his creation that made the heavens the angler oft doth see, taking therein no little delectation to think how strange, how wonderful they be, framing thereof an inward contemplation to set his heart from other fancies free. And whilst he looks on these with joyful eye, his mind is wrapped above the starry sky. What a beautiful poem. And now on page 45, we have the quote from uh, Piscator. He says, uh, Mary, even eat him to supper, will go to my hostess from whence we came. She told me as I was going out of door that my brother Peter, a good angler and cheerful companion, had sent word he would lodge there tonight and bring a friend with him. My hostess has two beds, and I know you and I may have the best. We'll rejoice with my brother Peter and his friend. Tell tales, or sing ballads, or make a catch, or find some harmless sport to content us, and pass away a little time without offense to God or man. And I just love that uh, about peaceful angling and really an innocent brotherhood for them, and I, I can definitely relate to experiences like that in my own life. In the book, it really covers a lot of things like uh, about certain fish he chronicles, like the salmon. He tells us a lot of things about the bait you would use, the origin of some of these fish, the fish's natural habitat, uh, what they uh, taste like when you cook them and eat them, uh, and just a lot of natural details about them uh, that is really amazing. Really listed out almost like a very good naturalist or a biologist. So it gives you so many details on it. Like at one point it remarks about the salmon that he's the king of the river. And just hearing that and his description of that, it changed the way I see the salmon now. So does this book, The Complete Angler by Isaac Walton belong on your bookshelf? Well, I could say yes. If you're into nature, if you're into fishing, if you're into a uh, just a peaceful theme, a peaceful read, a very positive read. If you're an outdoorsman, this is a great classic. Uh, it's a short read, just 148 pages. And the book is so poetic, so I think if you love poetry, even if you didn't care about fishing, you'd be blown away by some of the verse. Um, reasons why you wouldn't like it. Well, it's written in older English, just uh, not not a style I think too many people today are very familiar with. You know, it's somewhat like uh, the King James Bible. Uh, another thing is, you know, fishing's developed, so a lot of the stuff he talks about is very archaic. I've seen some people say, where's the fly fishing? Fishing's developed, so people are like, give me the new, the current, the relevant stuff. And uh, if you're not into spiritual writing, he talks a lot about God, a lot about Jesus. Also, I th and I do think there, this is a general problem with the book, is there's a lack of notes to really explain things uh, on the side to maybe give a definition or clarify things. So I do remember when I read it, looking up, uh, what is this fish he's talking about in America? We don't have some of these fish that he is talking about in uh, England and the British Isles. What's a lesson we can take away from uh, this great book, The Complete Angler? I think the biggest thing is that fishing is great. That's regardless if you're a level one fisherman or if you're a level 100, because uh, he was so experienced and he loved it. Um, it's such an innocent pastime, uh, low risk, but can have a great reward. Put some food on the table. Fishing is just great. And I think if you read this book, you'll come away with a greater appreciation for the sport for the pastime, and just the pleasure to be out uh, by the water with some friends. Okay guys, thank you so much for tuning in today to hear our book review on The Complete Angler. I do hope you'll check out this great read or go fishing <laughs> as it advises us to do. And uh, I just hope you'll have a wonderful day and uh, we'll have some more videos shortly. Thank you guys. Bye.